Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Paleo Zookeeper Association, my name is Austin. The tourist you saw there with the lovely Ninja Tortoise mu music was Leo, my leopard tortoise. The small, the small and northern variety, not the larger southern variety. Tortoises have been a part of human history and a part of prehistory for a long time. Even the dinosaurs shared space with them. And because of this, we have so many different forms of them. From the modern slider turtles and Galapagos land tortoises to re two real g prehistoric giants like um, several species of large uh, sea turtles and even even just as large freshwater turtles. But we also had a uh, pretty large uh, species of tortoises larger than the Galapagos land tortoise that actually lived out relatively more recently. The Megalocelsus. Atlas. I'll just call it the Atlas tortoise for short. Was one of the largest species of tortoises, if not the largest species of tortoise to ever walk the earth. With a length between over six and a half feet long to almost nine feet long, and with a height of almost six feet tall, it definitely earns the towel as the largest species of tortoise that ever lived. It also had an estimated weight of between 1,000 to 2,000 kilograms or 2,200 to 4,400 pounds, which is basically over one ton to over two tons. Definitely making it one of the largest land tortoises on Earth. According to the fossil record, the Atlas tortoise was, was around from the late Miocene to early or mid Pleistocene and was mostly found in areas from Pakistan all the way to Southeast Asia. Paleofloral analysis shows that in some of its range, its habitat was, was mostly warm, humid, with a strong monsoon season, lots of leafy flowering vegetation. Probably most likely like open forest, or something similar to like a moist savanna habitat. Indicating that this tortoise could probably be a great grazer and browser. Despite the resemblance to the Galapagos land tortoises or any other giant island tortoises, the Atlas tortoise is actually more akin to the Scalcada, or African spurred tortoise, and the Star tortoise of India. As one would expect, taking care of this large animal would not be an easy feat. However, compared to a lot of other prehistoric extinct animals, such as dinosaurs, it is relatively more easier since we do have living relatives alive today, albeit much, much smaller. So we can use uh, what we know about taking care of tortoises especially the big ones, and be able to use it to be able to feed and house these giant atlas tortoises. As one would expect, taking care of this large animal would not be an easy feat. However, compared to a lot of other prehistoric extinct animals, such as dinosaurs, it is relatively more easier since we do have living relatives alive today, albeit much, much smaller. So we can use uh, what we know about taking care of tortoises, especially the big ones, and be able to use it to be able to feed and house these giant Atlas tortoises. Due to its size, it is obvious that the Atlas tortoise would need a large amount of food. Generally, you would feed a 
between 1 to 4% of the animal's body weight. On the low end, for a tortoise that weighs 2,200 to 4,400 pounds, on the low end, you need to feed it on the 1% scale 22 to 44 pounds, and on the high, high end of 4%, 88 to 176 pounds of food. As offspring, they should be fed every day. But once they reach to, 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 or to, to early adulthood, they will need to be fed primarily three times a week. With necks that can reach to, reach to lengths of six to seven feet long, this definitely shows that the, that the Atlas tortoise would definitely be an efficient browser and grazer of its habitat. One way we could tell that the Atlas tortoise was both a grazer and a browser is that looking at the shape of its shell shows that it can definitely reach up to browse but not as, as extreme as some species of saddleback tortoises on the Galapagos. And it's not too much of the point that the tortoise had his head low on the ground like other species of Galapagos land tortoise as well. So the shape of the shell has shown us that it is basically an intermediary, basically in between. It could go either way, depending on what's available at the time. When choosing a food item for your tortoise, it is best to have food items that are high in fiber and low in starch or have no starches at all. Pelleted feed made specifically for tortoises are a great, are a great source of food for the tortoises. Especially if it's for a grazing variety, since it turns out that the Atlas tortoise is a, was both a browser and a grazer, so such a form of pelleted feed would be doable. Make, sh make certain that the tortoise gets a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. Various fruits and vegetables are great for tortoises. Especially salad greens like romaine lettuce, which is known to be loved by practically all tortoises. I should know, my leopard tortoise likes it too. Prickly pear cactus is, is also a good source of food for tortoises, as long as you get rid of the spines. And the fruit from this said cacti would be a good treat for the tortoises, especially when doing training and enrichment. Bamboo stems and leaves, at least thin uh, bamboo stems, would be a good source of food for tortoises as well. They are generally non-toxic to tortoises, while it's, it should be noted that tortoises don't always find them appealing, but they are considered non-toxic and are doable for tortoises. Despite the name and appearances, lucky bamboo or Chinese water bamboo is not bamboo at all. Not only that, it is also extremely toxic to tortoises, so this is definitely one plant you should avoid at all costs. Along with pelleted feed, fruits, and vegetables, Timothy hay is also a really good uh, source of food for tortoises. Especially when you deal with a tortoise that weighs between 1 to 2 tons, a, lar a large supply of Timothy hay would be a great source of food for such a big tortoise. Calcium is a very important uh, mineral that should be included in all the diet plans for the Atlas tortoise. Even even modern day tortoises, this is very important for offspring, for growing, for proper grow bone and shell development. Adults make sure their uh, bones and shells are maintained, and also for laying eggs and breeding females. One way you could be able to supplement calcium in their diet. Not just having high calcium food like cactus, calcium powder that's really available as reptiles is, is the way to do it. If you couldn't be able to get the calcium powder, powdered tums, basically tums that are grounded up manually, can be used as a substitute. 
Another way you can be able to supplement your Taurus's diet with uh, calcium is with calcium blocks like this. This is often used for modern day Taurus species, both to supply them with calcium and Taurus can uh, keep uh, using their beaks against it to pretty much make certain that their beaks don't get overgrown. Obviously, for a fully grown Atlas Taurus that weighs between a ton or two, <laughs> You're gonna need something a lot bigger than the, than is available today. I would recommend probably making calcium blocks that are equivalent to the same size as a 40 pound salt lake used for livestock. These tips and so on are essential for making certain that the largest land tortoise that ever exists is well fed. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for later this week or so, part two of this uh, video will be able to be uploaded. Next one will be on containment and housing. Please hit the subscribe button so you can stay, stay tuned to it. I hope you have a grand day.